tutorial videos. Today I'm going to talk you through how to draw a realistic dog's eye using coloured pencil. I'm using Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and Polychromos pencils for this eye and I'm going to show you all the colours that I'll be using. Here I've got my 093 Violet Grey Luminance pencil which has a slight violet tinge to it so I'll be using this on the grey areas. Next up we have my 280 Burnt Umber in my Polychromo set uh, which I'll be using for those dark browns and some dark strands of fur around the eye as well. I have my 181 Paint Grey for those dark greys. And my favourite colour to use, a 283 Burnt Sienna for those warm browns in and around the eye. My teeny tiny black pencil, you can probably tell um, I use this one a lot, uh, so I'll be using my Derwent pencil extender to make drawing a little easier with this one. I have my 832 Brown Ochre in there for the highlights and the fur. And I've got my 876 Burn Ochre for those beautiful golden orange tones in the fur as well. And of course my Luminance White Pencil, which I use to pick out areas of highlights, blend and soften darker tones. So I'll be using this and the Violet Grey to give the hazy gloss appearance in the eye. So as you can see, I've already completed the left eye and I'm using exact same colours for the right eye. This eye is a little bit more glossy and grey and the pupil is less defined than the other uh, due to the light so I'm going to be using the colours slightly differently in this one. So to begin with I'm going to apply a base layer of Burnt Sienna to bring out those deep warm brown hues in the eye. I've already picked out those reflective spots so I'm avoiding putting any pencil in these areas as I want them to be as light as possible so I want the paper to really come through in that area. So I'm just applying gentle pressure in circular motions to give an even coverage. Don't worry about the grain of the paper showing through at this stage because we'll be applying lots more layers to smooth this out later on. So now I'm going to create a milky grey cast to those browns and add my violet grey luminance pencil. Once again, I'm just pressing gently and using rotational motions and blending the two colours together. The warmth from the sienna is going to softly come through beneath and the violet grey is going to act like a coating over the top. So we have a soft purple hue on top of a warm brown to create this unusual colour being cast on the eye. I'm just gently blending these two colours together, pressing very softly, doing the same rotational movements as I did before. I'm applying a little bit more to the top of the eye where the shadow is going to be a lot deeper and then I'm just fading it out so just getting lighter as I reach the bottom of the eye. Adding white can also help to further blend the colours together but do be aware that this can desaturate the colours and make them appear more milky. So if you want to maintain those gorgeous colours make sure to use a colourless blender instead uh, Karen Dash do some fantastic blenders and these came with my set of pencils that I bought not so long ago as well. I will be doing a video showing the difference between blending with a white pencil and a colourless blender at some point in the future as well. I do like to reapply colours on top of one another a few times just to enhance them. If I feel I may have lost too much of that warm brown, I can go back in and softly add some more on top and re-blend it again. Now using my Burnt Umber, which is a very deep brown, I'm going to softly outline and define the shape of the eye. So the areas where the lid and the lip create the most shadow. This will give me a sharp separation and act as a key guide when I come to further develop those shadows. Make sure your pencils are fairly sharp when you are adding in the detail and outlining areas and try not to apply too much pressure because you don't want to create um, indents in the paper. So 
So I'm just mapping out the shape of the eye very lightly. I'm also blending these areas in slightly, particularly in the corner of the eye, just to give the illusion of shadow as well. So now I'm going to darken those lines further, but this time using my Payne's Grey. So I've got a deep brown on my first layer, which is going to softly come through beneath the grey. I wanted to create a subtle bit of warmth in the shadows before those greys get cooler with the application of my violet grey. Um, so it's going to be a gentle transition. I also like to mark out any spots of highlights to make sure I don't fill in these areas and I like to blend them using a white pencil to reduce the harshness of that line and bring those two tones together. So I'm just going to add a little bit more shadow to that little corner here. So I'm just gently mapping out those outlines using my pencil here. Just creating that arch of the top of the eye. And just softly bring in that curve round. So now I have my outline, I can go in and fill in those really dark shadows and start to blend them out. The great thing about the Luminance Violet Grey is it applies really nicely over dark colours. So if you're looking for a really gentle transition from shadow to mid-tone, you can soften and lighten those areas. You can do the same using a French grey if it has a bit of a warm grey cast to it, or a steel grey in the luminance set if there is a distinctive blue cast to the area. So the lighting can really dictate what colours you will need to use for your drawing. And many references will have a multitude of warm and cold hues, uh, which can be caused by different types of lighting as well. So to help blend those dark paint grey areas that I've applied, I'm going to use my violet grey just to soften those highlights, because I don't want them too dark, but I want them a little bit lighter, so it's just going to give that nice transition between the two colours. they are still a little bit too light, I can still go in with my dark paints grey and darken those areas and then if I darken them too much I can go over them and blend the two together using my violet grey. I'm just adding some shadow just to the corner of the eye here and just blending it into those browns. And I'm going to add a little bit more shadow around the arch of the eye at the top as well. So the highlight spots in the pupil are really important, so you need to make sure that these highlight spots are outlined before you start to fill in any of the detail within the eye. Coloured pencil is incredibly difficult to erase, even with a mechanical pencil, so if you add too much colour to these highlights it's going to be extremely difficult to bring back that contrast. So outline them using a sharp dark grey, so you know never to cross these important lines. I'm going to start adding a lot more violet grey around the pupil now. In my reference there is a slight haze over the eye that has caused the shape of the pupil to lose definition. In some references the details in the eyes aren't always going to be clear, particularly in the eyes of dogs. Dogs eyes have a reflective lining behind the retina which can sometimes cause the eye to glow when the light hits them, or a dog may have cataracts uh, which causes clouding in the lens and can create that hazy look. Eyes are really tricky to photograph, so it can sometimes be difficult to see those details. That's okay, so long as the eyes aren't entirely bleached or blacked out. It's okay to use what you have in front of you. Rather than redesigning the eye and adding detail where you think it should be, you can simply just add a little shadow to the pupil just to bring it out. This will make it much more natural without changing its appearance drastically by adding what you don't see. I'm going to darken the corner of the eye a little bit and blend that shadow in. The area around the pupil will sometimes be so dark that you can't distinguish between where the two meet. 
Simply add a deep black on the pupil just to give it a subtle separation and you can always go in with a light grey or a white and just create a soft highlight at the bottom to give the impression of the curved shape of the pupil. Pupil will automatically continue this line in their minds to bring out the pupil from the rest of the eye. So you don't have to be dramatic with dark lines. Soft little touches like this can achieve a more natural appearance and avoid that cartoonish effect. So I'm going to continue to build up those layers in that eye and just make it a little bit darker. some of those highlights using my mechanical eraser just doing little touches just to bring that colour of the paper back because I did go a little bit too dark. I'm just going to brush those little bits of rubber away. 
I'm now going to start to bring out the area around the lids and the areas where the fur meets the eye. I'm going to start light using my Luminance 832 pencil, which I have been using for the highlights in the fur already, and just fill in all the areas where the paper is still showing. This will act as my base layers for some areas and my highlights for others. Once this is down, I'm then free to go in and add my mid-tones. In the corner of the eye, the area is quite dark and also very warm, so it has an almost red cast to it. So for this area, I'm going to put down a generous layer of sienna. Don't be afraid to go dark sometimes. Contrast is key when you're developing realism. I'm also going to use the same colour just to add some strands of fur around the top and the bottom of the eye. So I'm pulling out some of those details. Consider the direction of the fur around the eye, as it can sometimes dramatically change direction depending on its location. On the top of the eye, the fur flicks in an upward arc towards the right. But on the corner of the eye, the fur creates an arcing fan-like motion as it grows towards the brow. And where the nose meets the eye, the direction of the fur clashes and grows over the fur before spanning out in two different directions. So just be careful around areas like these and map out the fur direction first. The face has so many lumps and bumps where the fur falls and changes direction. So take your time, do a few practice strokes to understand the shape of the fur and the direction it's going in before you start going in and adding any dark strands over lighter areas. I'm using my Luminance 836 to develop the mid-tones and create a base layer for my shadows in the fur. This shade is a touch darker than my 832 at about 50%. So the colours are both beautiful for creating those golden shades in the fur. So if you are drawing a golden retriever or a golden Labrador, um, I recommend these shades to get you started. And if the dog has a slight orange cast to it, you can go in afterwards and add this with an 876 or a 041 luminance pencil. So if you are interested in achieving all the colours in the fur, like I have for this piece, start with a Luminance 832 for your highlights, then go in and add a Luminance 836 for your mid-tones, and then you can add a 041 or an 876 for that orange cast, and then you can start adding those darker details on top. So the strands of fur I've um, created on this drawing, I've used a burnt sienna, and a burnt umber in my polychromos.